Hi guys, you are welcome to Nestelle. Thank you so much for coming by. Today we're going to be discussing the book, I Am Glad My Mom Died. <laughs> Yo, this book is everything. Honestly, it is everything. Um, written by Jeanette McCurney. McCurdy. I don't know how to pronounce that name well. I listened to it on audio on Scribd. This book is, is an amazing book. It's an eye-opener, it's engaging, it's entertaining, it's, it grabs you from jump. I mean, the title alone, <laughs> the title alone grabs you and it's like, listen to me. <laughs> um, so if this is your first time, I am Nez. Welcome to Nez Telly. We are all about books on this channel. We are reading books, whether we like them or not, inspiring you to read, coming up with ideas from the books that we read. And then if you want to read a book, you'll be directed to where you can get it. And in the community, we talk about other places we can find books and what we think about whatever books. So please, if this is your first time, subscribe, like the video and leave a comment below. How did you even find me? How did you find us? How did you find this wonderful group of readers? And what do you think about this book? I am glad my mom died. Of course, the first thing you will think is why would anybody be glad that their mom died? Um, this girl was a child actor or ac actor. So she started in 20, no, she started when she was six years old. And she tells very interesting, she tells, she talks about her mom in a very interesting way, you know, um, but the whole time when you're listening to this book, you're like, this girl's mom is actually not okay. She talks about um, the first time her mom drove her to uh, her first rehearsal and how she got her first gig and somehow landed as a teen um actress where she started doing very well you know and all that but i feel like if you've watched enough hollywood or if you listen to enough hollywood news you would know that the scene of child actors and teen actors and actresses is actually not it's not pretty it's messy so anyway the major thing that i will point out to you here hoping that that will hook you enough to want to read the book because it was a, the mom was a whole thing but i'm going to point out one particular thing that was a major issue by the time this lady was 11 years old she had started developing she started growing boobs and in her bid to make her mom very happy and very proud she asked her mom, what can I do so that I don't continue, I don't feel out like a regular girl? And the mom literally put her through the way to become anorexic. Actually, I think it was bulimic. I, I, I mix them up a lot, but I think it was anorexia. Anorexia is when you struggle with eating. You find it hard to eat. You don't, you, you, you eat, everything you eat, you eat is very small. And most times it's a mental health condition. It's, it's, it's more in the mind. So every apple you eat, you calculate how many calories, then you ask yourself if it's what even eating because all you can think about is what is going to add to your body. And this basically kicks off a, an over decade long relationship that she had with food. She had, what they call it, food abuse. Do you understand? Eating disorder, that's what it's called. Because about seven years after that, she became bulimic. Bulimia is when you actually eat food that you like. And then a few minutes after you eat it, you put your hand into your mouth and um, activates the ability to throw up the food. Now, at 11, she started this. At 21, she started dating this guy. Or around when she was 21, she started dating this guy that found out that she was not okay you know, mentally, because of the way she handles food. And, and she loved the guy so much. The guy said, you cannot, we cannot date if you're going to keep hurting yourself like that. So it's either you go and get help or we let go of this relationship. And she loved the man enough or the, the guy, whoever it was, enough to try and go and get the help that she needed. So when she went and got this help, um, where you know the problem is, is that, um, this person was like a food expert and a mental health, you know, he's a therapist, but majoring on food disorders. So after like about a month or a month and a half of her going through like, you know, trying to make headway and she thought she was doing well, the lady started asking her questions about herself, about her family, because she was trying to poke and find out how come she feels the way she does about food. And for some reason, mentioning her mom sparked 
a defense like this metal wall bash over her because as far as she was concerned her mom is a superhero the best thing that ever happened to her like without her mom she wouldn't be this successful ac actress even though she dreads the world and being able to take care of herself you know financially you know and all that and honestly the mother never like what generally happens with a, a lot of um hollywood child actors is that you find out that the family starts to eat the girl's money that didn't happen to her she was given opportunities to give to her families which she did but her money was hers generally she had agents she had managers you know so her issue wasn't that you know she was being bled dry by the family but somehow mentally she had a lot of issues so as far as she was concerned her mom was the best thing that ever happened to her her mom was alive at this point her mom dies by the way but um her mom was the best thing that ever happened to her and she could not she could not like like are you kidding me what are you telling me my mom the best mom the superstar the best mom in the whole world you know and all that because her mom was sick her mom had cancer so was you know different battles of cancer we would win lose win lose it will come back you know that kind of thing so she would um she at first her mom was like the best thing that ever happened to her and she she quits she quit that therapist because how can I talk? How dare you talk about my mom like this? You know, it's something very is glaring. You know, when you're in the midst of abuse, a lot of times you don't know that you're abused. You're willing to defend your abuser. You know, so in her mind, how dare you? How dare you talk about this? My mom, the best woman in the whole world, that made me what I am, as you know, and all that. And walked. She walked away from that therapy session and never went back to this particular person. About three or four years after. Um, she met another person. She somehow, I think, okay, she was in an airplane and she had eaten, she had finished binging on all the airplane food and a few minutes after ran straight to the bathroom to do the normal ah. So she was still doing that to throw up the food and a tooth fell out. Now, this was brand new information. I actually got to do some um, research on that because she, it turns out that um, the acid in your tummy, every time you throw up, if you throw up often enough, the acid starts destroying parts of your digestive system. So like your gullet or your oesophagus, that's the pipe or the food goes down through, gets damaged. And in this case, it had damaged her tooth. So it had damaged it all the way down to the roots that the tooth came out. She didn't even feel pain. Like blood was coming out. She did not feel, have you ever pulled tooth before? I pulled the tooth recently. It's one of the most painful ordeals. Like it's not pulling it out that is the ordeal, but the after. Do you understand the discomfort and everything comes? But she didn't feel a thing. That is how rotten the her situation had got gotten. She didn't say exactly, or she said what tooth? But I don't remember. Maybe a molar. But she lost the whole tooth came out. You get that is how badly the situation had become. And she now thought to herself, like, okay, so I need to do something about this. At this point, her mom had died, and she still coming to reality of the fact that there was a hold on her that she knew nothing about. Her mom was a very, um, her mom was mentally ill, that person was concerned. She had a, her mom had issues that needed to be taken care of, but she didn't take care of it. And somehow she took it on to this last, her last child, this girl, she had two older brothers. And you know, a lot of things came to question for me, like till this girl was about 16 years old or so, her mom was still giving her her bath. And she lived with her family, like her mom lived with her own family, like her mom's mom and dad was there. She was going through that. This girl, Jeanette, was having, going through um, cycles, you know, she was, she became OCD at one point. Like, you know, OCD, where you, you feel the need to knock three times instead of just once, when you want to touch something, instead of touching just, you know, when you point to touch several times. And small, small things start becoming quite a big issue for you. Now, that's a whole thing I don't know anything about. I think I, at this point I have to actually read about it because I'm now curious what OCD like. Um, and every, a lot of people noticed, and a few people talked about it, but nobody actually called it to order. You know, like, why are you bathing this girl at 16 years old? And the woman used to bathe her, check her vagina to see if she's still a virgin, check her breast to see how much has come out because she needed to stay like a teen pop star. Now, if you've watched Nickelodeon or you have children that have watched Nickelodeon, you know this lady we're talking about. If you don't know her name already, Jeanette McCurdy. If you've watched, if you remember watching iCarly or if you remember watching Sam and Kat, she's the lady that plays Kat. Or is she Sam? Sam, actually. She's the blonde lady. Right now, I think she's, if she's not 30 yet, she's almost 30 years old. And she's the one that we're talking about. So this whole time when this show was going on, she was going through this massive mental situation. Mad, right? <laughs> 
Anyway, that's it about this book. I hope that I've convinced you to read this book because it's worth the read. There's just so much to learn. And you want to ask, you want to find out why are people not, like when you see something wrong, why don't we point it out? This is deal about mind your business. Especially when it comes to parenting, everybody should live. See, ask questions. If it means you lose a friendship, it means you save a child. Please ask questions questions so that's it about this book again if you haven't please don't forget to subscribe thank you so much for coming by and enjoy the best of the season thank you so much for watching until next time bye, -bye.